Hello AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School and I'm very excited to start our next unit, Unit 4, which is all about the contextual meaning of a derivative. And with Topic 4.1, we're going to talk very specifically about what does a derivative mean in the context of a problem. So we're going to take a look at our first example here. So again, the beginning of a new unit means we have a completely new banner with unit four, contextual applications. And as I said, topic 4.1, interpreting the meaning of the derivative. You're basically going to do just that, interpret the meaning of a derivative in the context of a problem that's probably going to be shrouded in some words. So you're going to have to do a little bit of reading, but the good news is you're probably not going to have to do a whole lot of computing. So in units two and three, it says we've extensively studied the procedure for finding a derivative. You guys have really put in the time. You hopefully know the power rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule, all those other variations that we learned in unit three that dealt with composite functions and inverse functions and implicit written equations. But now we're going to talk about in unit four what the derivative means. So I've taken a problem that's got a little bit of a popularity to it. It's a former AP question way back in 2001 on the operational exam, and it was ABBC2. Now, ABBC means that it was a problem that was common to both the AB and the BC form of the test. There's always three free response questions nowadays that are common to both exams. And this question read as follows. It says, the temperature in degrees Celsius of the water in a pond is a differentiable function W of time T. The table to the right shows the water temperature as recorded every three days over a 15 day period. And if you just look over here at the table, you can see that we increment our time in three day periods as the problem indicated. And then we have some temperature over here. Now these are Celsius temperatures, so the water is not necessarily freezing. And it kind of fluctuates a little bit as you can tell over those uh, 15 days. The question in part A reads, Use the data from the table to find an approximation for W prime of 12. Show the computations that lead to your answer and indicate units of measure. A very standard question that you would see on the AP exam. And it's a question that we've actually addressed in our class you know, at Avon High School, but we didn't really know truly the meaning so much because we were just novices to the idea of derivative, but now things have changed. So there is actually several different ways that you could answer this question with several different answers that would all have been counted correct back in 2001. But our issue that we have is that we're needing to take the derivative of a table, and you can't do that under conventional means, right? So what you would do instead, as we've indicated before, is think about slope. Right here, 12 is the value in question, but we can't find slope unless we have a pair of ordered pairs, right? Uh, we have to have two of those. So one of the ways that we could do this is that we could say that w prime of 12 would be approximately, and it's okay if you don't use the equal sign, you really should use the equal sign because this is not in any way supposed to be the definite value of the derivative because we don't know it, but we will look the other way if you accidentally put equals. And what we could do is we could say, well, let's find out what is the water temperature at day 15 and subtract the water temperature at day nine and divide by the change in time, which is 15 minus nine. Now that would certainly work. That would not be a problem. We could do this calculation by looking at our table. The W of 15 value is 21. The W of nine value is the 24. And then of course, 15 minus nine we know is six. And then once we simplify this further, we can reduce it as much or as little as we want. Reducing it all the way would give us the negative one half. Now, what you have is a correct answer, and I want you to realize that that correct answer would have been achieved even at this point. You didn't even have to subtract the 15 minus nine. Once you have a numeric value that would be equivalent to negative one half, you would be good in terms of the answer, and the showing the computations is basically either this 
or we'll even think about taking that. In other words, we need to see a difference quotient. We need to see that you subtracted a couple of dependent variable values and divided by a couple of independents. You subtracted some W's over some T's. I always like it for my students to include this, if at all possible, what I'm pointing to, but the problem with this first answer is it would not give the answer point yet because we still have to extract values from the table. Now, if a student only wrote this, they would earn the computation point likely and the answer point. Now we have to indicate the units of measure. Well, the numerator was measured in degrees Celsius, while the denominator was measured in days. So we could just call this degrees Celsius per day. And it's pretty complete at that point. And you can see that in 2001, this particular part was worth two points. The student would earn one point for a difference quotient. So that would be either of these two things in yellow. Even though we did subtract the 15 minus 9, that's probably going to be OK. But if you want to play it safe, write the 15 minus 9 there first before you decide to reduce. And then you don't even have to worry about writing that. And then, of course, you would have another point with the answer and units. Now, the other variation to this question, and I think what I'm going to do rather than write it up is just um, maybe visit this document if I can find it OK here. And I'm just going to do a snip and bring it into the screen view here. How's that? So the other possibilities. I'll just paste it in here. OK, so I'm going to keep this here just for the time being, but then I'm going to get rid of it. But notice how you very conceivably could have chosen the 15 and the 12 with which to find your slope. So the two points that would involve the 12 and the value of time just directly after, or you could have used the 12 and the 9. That would have been perfectly suitable as well. Now notice they give you two different answers, negative 1 3rd Celsius uh, degrees per day or negative 2 thirds degrees Celsius per day. And of course, we could have used our answer that I showed, uh, what, which used the values around. Now it's not overwhelmingly common that the AP exam here recently has provided you with this estimation problem where there is a number directly in the table. Normally, they'll give you something that lies directly between like 7 and 9 or 6 and 9, which I think would be 7.5 in this case. So it's going to be a little bit um, more tight upon uh, um, using the correct values. In that case, you would have to use 9 and 6. Okay. Now, hopefully that makes sense, but that's really not what 4.1 is about. 4.1 is about writing, explaining, expressing what this means. So if we were asked to interpret the meaning of this approximated derivative value, what that means is that you're going to have to give yourself a little bit more you know, um, time with this and insight, and really paint the picture about what this means. And these are always asked on the AP exam. And I like to use the acronym NUT, N-U-T, because I think that can really help you understand context. So what's NUT? Well, here is NUT, the guidelines for interpreting the meaning of a derivative in context. So if you have to do this, think about explaining N. N would be the noun, the subject of the problem, along with the number. They both begin with N, so it's going to be very easy to remember. The U is always your units, we've, we've talked a little bit about already, and the T, which is sometimes the one that's most commonly forgotten, is the time. This would be the time at, at which the derivative or the change is being computed. So if we add an extra little part to our example one, interpret the meaning of the derivative in this context, what would we say? Well. 
we know that our answer was negative one half. The, the fact that we were negative kind of conveys that something is getting smaller or decreasing. That's a great word. Well, what is decreasing? Give me that noun. Well, this stood for the temperature of water, right? That's what that WT was. So I think we could start with a statement already, with a phrase, and we can say the temperature of the water. So there is going to be some writing. You have to be used to that. Some of you may have already taken AP stats uh, in your high school career. You know what the writing requirement is there. So it's not too, uh, not too much different from that experience. Now, if you want to go into more detail to say the water in the pond, that's great. That gives it more uh, pizzazz, but you wouldn't have to use that prepositional phrase. In fact, anything that I put in parentheses here would be something that could be completely optional. Now, I like that word decrease. We've established that this water temperature is changing, but more powerful than, say, changing by a negative, might be the word decreasing. Now, if you use the word decreasing, do not, do not put a negative with that one half because then you have that double negative argument happening, which you can argue could be positive. So don't put the negative when you use the word decreasing. Let's go ahead and use that symbol, one half a degree Celsius per day. And now we have our units idea. The only thing that we're missing is our time. And our time is, like I said, the most commonly neglected piece of the puzzle. I want to use the word at, and I really want that to be your main preposition whenever you're interpreting the meaning of a derivative. Use the word at, and then say specifically what that time was, which in this case clearly was 12. Okay, that was a day. So just say at time t equal 12 days. That's going to be the safer approach. Uh, if you said on the 12th day, that is a little ambiguous because does it mean the 11th day? We probably would be okay with that, but I wouldn't use ordinal numbers. Those are numbers that have ST and TH, first, second, third, whatever. I would use a cardinal number, a regular counting number, and you would always be safe. At time t equal 12, and that would be in days. And that would take care of n, u, and t for this particular problem. We got a couple of more uh, of these examples coming your way. We hope that you uh, are able to learn from them a little bit. Um, and in addition, I can't help but uh, plug a little bit of um, a place that you can certainly go to to get a little bit more help. And I'm just going to drag this into the window here, but this is an AP classroom. You should all have access to AP classroom. And as you can see here in AP classroom, you have access to these wonderful things called daily videos, AP daily. And Sarah Stryker does a really good job, I think, on topic 4.1. There's only a single video here. Double click that or, and move into that video. Watch that a little bit and learn a little bit more about this idea. And if you don't have access to AP Daily, you can certainly um, talk to your classroom teacher about getting that taken care of. But anyway, I hope this certainly helps out and uh, we will see you at the next video.